Let's turn to the other big story of the day. Jerry Sandusky speaking out from behind bars for the first time since going to prison for child sex abuse while at Penn State. A new, new documentary titled The Framing of Joe Paterno. Sandusky talks about the late legendary coach and claims that key witnesses in the case changed their stories. Joining me now in his first prime time interview is documentary maker John Ziegler. Uh, welcome to you, Mr. Ziegler. Um, what is the purpose of the film that you're making? Well, first of all, there's already a film made called The Framing of Joe Paterno, part one. This Jerry Sandusky interview may be part of a larger film, The Framing of Joe Paterno. It's an honor to be with you. You've actually inspired part of my work here, because on the day of Jan Jerry Sandusky's uh, verdict, when you were anchoring here on CNN, you declared that Joe Paterno was part, clearly part of a cover-up. I thought that was ridiculous, because there was no evidence for that then. There's no evidence for that now. It doesn't even make any sense. The media rushed to judgment against Joe Paterno here and against Penn State. And I was trying to use Jerry Sandusky's knowledge to be able to fill in the blanks, the many blanks that we have in the story to try to put together the pieces of this puzzle, which have not yet been fit together. Now, do you think Jerry Sandusky is a pedophile? Yeah, I do. Okay, so why would you want to give him the oxygen of being able to I, talk about his victims. Uh, wait a minute. Let's let's well, get so something. That's what let's you're get, doing. No, I'm not. Well, let's get something very well, straight. No, I'm not. Oxygen? Do you know where he's living? He's living in a supermax prison. He's living where he belongs. That's right. That, that's he's fine. He's a convicted but, pedophile. But I'm not preyed, giving him any oxygen. He preyed on these here's, poor young here's, kids. Here's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get to the truth of this matter. Joe Paterno's dying wish was just find out what the truth was. No one has done that for Joe Paterno. But Joe Paterno is trying to do that. that. And know. the only way to do that is to talk to the central figure in this story. Right. And that's Jerry Sandusky. And when there's corroborating evidence, mm -hmm. which there is for much of what Jerry says with regard to Penn State and Joe Paterno's lack of culpability, mm -hmm. I will use that to try to make the case let's, that this was a rush to judgment. Let's listen to some of this uh, apparent evidence. You don't remember slapping towels yourself, do you? I don't have to be I wouldn't be more inclined to be in a slap boxing or something like that. You know, I'm, I'm not sure. And then I remember he, he always, no matter what we did, he would always get the last lick in. I mean, he would get the last smack. And then I would, I changed him like, and I ran him into a wall. And, but then I was like pulling him back to, to go back into the, into the area of shower where we were showering. And then, um, that was it. You know, that's all. I never saw Mike McQuarrie. I don't know whether the young man saw him. I don't know. Um, You're sure you never saw Mike I am sure. This is a man who refused to take the stand in his case. <clears throat> but to you, he's now coming out in this flippant, semi-jocular manner. Talking about abusing young boys yeah. in a shower, regardless of whether he raped them or not, and he's been convicted, or whether you believe him or not. Well, he's he was actually acquitted of the rape charge in that particular case. Right. He doesn't, he doesn't dispute running around a shower. I agree. Horse playing with right. a naked boy. But I understand, and that's outrageous to a lot of people, understandably so. I agree with that. In fact, I, I think one of the more amazing things here is Jerry Sandusky admits to me in my interview with him, which is three and a half hours, to activity that is actually criminal that I'm not sure he understands is criminal. But the reason why that clip is important is because it's the central issue in the Joe Paterno Penn State part of the story. But how does that have anything to do with Joe Paterno? Here, here's how, because I'm holding in my hands the corroborating evidence from the wit from the, the alleged victim in that case, victim number two, whose identity I now know. This is an interview he, he gave to an FBI trained investigator, former police officer on the day Joe Paterno was fired, saying nothing happened that night, Mike McQuarrie is lying, and that investigators tried to get him to lie to say what they wanted to hear him say. That is powerful, and this is proactively coming from a person who was a 24-year-old, married, sergeant in the Marine Corps at, Corps at that time, proactively coming out and saying, wait a minute, now I'm not saying nothing happened in the shower. What I'm saying is that had we known that on November 9th of 2011, people would have said, whoa, wait a minute, hold on, this is a rush to judgment. Nine, nine Let's different, find out. Nine no, different... No, not against Jerry Sandusky, who cares? This is not that difficult to understand. No, let me, this, let me, let me, let me, let me just be rude. I'm not... You, 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 you have a year and a half to make right. your case. Listen, you're going to give my me, case. You're gonna, yes, it's it's my case. You claim he's part of cover. Wait a minute. You claim he's part Sandusky. of cover. Jerry Sandusky. Did you not Jerry claim Sandusky. Joe Sandusky. You defamed Joe Paterno saying he was part of a cover-up. Did you not say okay. that? Let's take a break. See if you can Did calm you down. not say that? See if you can calm down. We'll try again after the break.